Absolutely, uh, it's a gradual uh, journey uh, towards uh, taking Africa to the top uh, uh, Somosi, uh, of course, which is very uh, uh, visible that Africa is actually the investment hub. Uh, but then uh, Africa needs to be favorable and welcoming to Africans before we can actually see how we can boost uh, this uh, uh, direct foreign investment. Uh, uh, coming to you, Mr. Wally, uh, uh, maybe in line with what uh, Mr. Elijah and Rocco just highlighted, during the launch of the African Continental Free Trade Area, there was actually, a, 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 I don't know how to put it, but some sort of like a wind of change, a positive wind of change uh, that was uh, blowing across the economic sphere in Africa. And uh, some people were of the opinion that, that it was going and it has the potential to actually position Africa's uh, uh, in uh, the uh, global economy because even till today, we, we cannot compare Africa's voice at, at the global economic level. So these are some of the strides uh, that can make Africa to have a voice that will be heard, especially when taking some very uh, uh, big uh, economic uh, decisions. So the, the question which I've always asked and which I will relate uh, to what we're having now with the, the launch of the African free trade area, we know, it was uh, a very historic and had the potential to transform Africa in entirety. So now we look at, at the security challenges that came uh, to Africa, especially uh, in the, the, the Sahel region and other areas, uh, problems affecting uh, regional blocks and everything, especially with the launch of the continental free trade area. I want us to be very logical uh, and look at how things unfolded. So now we want to analyze, do you think there is a, that uh, third party that isn't really happy seeing uh, that this uh, historic continental free trade area materializes. And that's why we see more and more the proliferation of uh, maybe arms in Africa, and also looking at uh, the security challenges that Africa has faced since the launch of the continental free trade area. And if you think uh, that uh, this is a, a, a classified or a defined uh, process to derail this economic move or stride by the African continent, what do you think, especially now with uh, the, the visa-free uh, regime that some countries are already implementing can be uh, the right solution towards tackling uh, all of these uh, constraints surrounding uh, around uh, the, the, the African continent, maybe uh, trying to retard uh, the steady growth of this inter, uh, intra-Africa trade? Well, the very nature of trade itself in the global sense of it is um, contestation. That is the reason why you hear terms by programming, by expert like uh, trade war between maybe two superpowers or certain countries. So um, uh, I think that is expected in the global scheme of things. But I would say that the challenge of integration in Africa, it is because of sheer lack of ideas, innovation on the part of the political leaders on the continent. There is really nothing holding us back in terms of external factors. For instance, if you pick Nigeria, the largest country on the continent, you are talking about, about 200 million people. That is a huge market by itself. So, for instance, um, uh, at the risk of sounding immodest, Nigeria does not necessarily need maybe any country in West Africa to say, I mean, for trade. I'm, and I'm, I'm being careful with this. I'm just using this as an example. This is a very large market. If you also extend that to Africa as a continent, you are talking about a continent of about 1.4 billion people. That is a huge market on its own. So I'm saying this to underscore the fact that uh, we already have potential to generate growth internally without necessarily looking to anybody, uh, maybe for what our political leaders call foreign direct investment. So what you need is to stimulate your own economic growth and then use that to now drive um whatever you need maybe in the area of innovation technology employment and everything you have the population here for employ I mean, for for human resource to drive such economic growth you have the resources here the gold the diamond arable land for agriculture 
We have the Congo base, um, the Congo River just pouring into the Atlantic Ocean. You have the River Niger just pouring into the Atlantic Ocean. These are resources that naturally a lot of European countries are looking for that they don't have as we have in abundance. So we have what it takes in that regard. And then the issue that you mentioned about security, you can't, uh, we can't continue to hold ourselves back because we think if we open the border, then security is going to be a major challenge. There are enough wisdom and of innovation technology to deal with security by itself you can use technology to police your border but the people that are also taken to crime you have to know that it is the internal contradictions in those countries in terms of still inequality and unemployment that is actually making people is part of the factor that is driving people to crime so if you sort your internal contradictions of unemployment that means you have um the, the armed group we have laser pool to recruit from to probably drive their criminal tendencies. But the issue about insecurity generally, I must hang on the fact that there is no country in the world that is secure. The gun epidemics in America, there's no any African country that can measure up to that. I mean, you you hear a lot of, a lot of seemingly disturbing news, like um, some people just go on the street, they go into the mall and they are shooting people. So what happens here is just that our own crime is taking place in the rural area, in places where they consider to be ungoverned spaces. But even the almighty American, with all the superstructure of, I mean, of uh, security architecture, look at the gun epidemics. So it doesn't mean that uh, there is one country that is safe of crime. Look, war, I mean, the Middle East has remained in a perpetual state of uh, instability, I mean, uh, of security challenges. Let me put it that way. But when it comes to religious tourism in the world, this same zone, no any other continent, I mean, no any other region rivals, in, uh, the, I mean, the tourist attraction that they generate annually in terms of people going for holy pilgrimage in Israel. I mean, even with the war that is going on between Israel and Hamas now, I'm not sure that people are not still going to travel to Jerusalem for pilgrimage. The same thing with people who travel to, 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 for Hajj, to Mecca, to Jeddah, and all these places. So what I'm trying to underscore is the fact that even though we have our security complications and challenges, there are no things that cannot be surmounted. It is just that the leaders have lacked the courage, they've lacked the ideas, they've lacked the innovation to address the issues. And then they resort to primordial issues like uh, don't let people move into our country. I was having a meeting with some senior government officials in Point Noir. And then when I was in Brasavi, I realized that you need just about five minutes on the water to cross from Kinshasa to Brasavi. So I asked, I said, why is there, why is there not a bridge connecting these two cities? Those senior officials, they laugh for more than four minutes because they, they, I think they find my question to be quite primitive. And then they asked that, uh, do you want the people in Kinshasa to come and overrun us here? They are more than us. That is the kind of primordial response that you get from senior officials who are taking critical public policy decisions, driving some of these countries. So most of these regimes feels like if you keep our people in, if we keep uh, people away from coming into our countries, then we are going to be free of crime. Now tell me which country is free of crime in Africa, even when we hedge ourselves in. So we can't, uh, we can't, because it's going to be a perpetual flux. It's not something that maybe you can end in a day. What you need to do is to solidify your security response, your security architecture, to be able to address these issues. And then you allow trade, free flow of movement, free flow of good, free flow of ideas and innovation to thrive. And what pollinates these ideas is as people move from one place to the other, they see opportunities and then they keep coming back, they come to invest, they see your countries as popular investment destination where they know that their investment is going to be secured and guaranteed. And then you open up the space. Ideas that power civilization have been battered as a result of interaction of people. And that is the reason why globalization is not a recent event. People have been moving for more than 2000 years. And as they move, they live in their tree, innovations and idea. That is how we have the algebra. That is how we have mathematics. That is how we have science. And at the time that we are now living that the democratization of information technology has actually opened up the space for everybody. You can no longer hedge people in. You can no longer hedge people out because of one visa requirement, draconian visa requirement. So I think these countries are provided leadership in that regard. And other countries like Nigeria, Ethiopia, South Africa, they need to seek, I mean, take, take dressing by also 
I, I, I'm not saying everybody should make it an all comma affairs, but make it very simple for people. As simple as people being able to apply for visa on their phone. And in three, four, five days, they get the decision whether they will be allowed to come to the country or not. It's as simple as that. You can't make people to go and be keen in the embassy and they are not even sure whether they are going to get it. Um, I know anybody that travel can share different experiences about how Achillean it has been moving across Africa. This is untenable. It is unfashionable in the 21st century. And then we have experiences to copy from European Union. Let us learn the right lesson and also apply it there. Crime and insecurity are not going very soon. What we need is innovative ideas to address those security concerns and then open up the space for people to move from Kenya to Mauritania, move from Cairo to, to Cape Town. And then in three, I mean, in three decades, you will see that the whole place is going to be blown up. I mean, for prosperity for all. 